Together again, a Lakes Funland story. This is already so cool. Alright. New game. Let's go. 1968. Magwood, we're waiting for you in the board of directors. Get there in ten minutes, please. Yeah, yeah, I know. Just give me a minute to get myself together. This is great. Absolutely great. I helped them grow this company, and now they're getting me fired. How nice of them. I should have known those pigs would cash me out at the first sign of trouble. Well, there goes my luck. I better practice what to tell Josephine when I get home. Ah, crap. If only there was a stupid solution, but I'm afraid not even God can help me this time. Ooh. Oh, friend, it won't. But I can help you. Who said that? Who's there? What? What the? What the heck are you? Where, where the heck am I? Don't get closer. Ah, ah come down, big man. I'm not going to hurt you. I heard your call, and so here I am. I could feel your desperation, and I thought you need a huge favor in terms of trouble. Well, it's your lucky day again. I'm all ears. The heck are you supposed to be? Ladies, don't mind that. Listen, I know how hard you've worked for this company for the last ten years. Those out there, those are your creations. You made them. They belong to you. And suddenly, things didn't march as planned. For neither of you. Now they want to believe you're responsible for their failure. They know their efforts bore no fruition. And that bothers them so much, so they decided to blame it on you. That doesn't seem right to me. Yeah... Go on. I'm here to offer you a great deal. A deal? What deal? Let's do this. I will provide you success, fortune, power, influence, stability, everything. I can make you a wealthy man, powerful. All that in exchange for one little thing. What is it? The price to pay would be your son. But listen, it's not what you think, trust me. I won't hurt the kid. I won't take his soul. Let's just say I'll take something from him one day. What? No, no, no. Listen to me. You're not doing anything to the kid. You understand? I might be desperate, but not enough to put in danger a family member, much less a kid. Magwood, trust me. No one's going to get hurt. That is the last thing I would do, you hear. You can take this right now and let whatever must happen to your son. It could be a life lesson. You don't know that. It doesn't have to be now. All I'm saying is that the price to pay is the boy. Even then, if you don't accept, you could lose him anyway, or your entire family. If they can't count on a man that can take good care of them, they'll leave you behind. Think about it carefully. You can leave right now without a job. Running the risk of losing your family, spending the next months trying to get a job to make a living. Or you can meet this building with a bright future ahead. Millions and millions of dollars could be waiting for you in the future. I'm a man of my word, so what's it going to be? <coughs> oh, and that it doesn't tell us. This is Ashley J. Water speaking. Introducing you to my investigation thesis project for Mrs. Pilvin's class. Hello. For this special conclusive project, I've decided to put my dedication, my concentration, and 
all of my energy into one particular case. Could it be controversial? Yes. Delicate? Of course. Tragic? Unfortunately. But overall, this is one of the most intriguing cases that Montreal and the surrounding area has heard of in the last couple of years with very little information available on it. On October 11th, 1990, Martin Calcott, Joshua Felwick, and Wendy Gribble disappeared at night under mysterious circumstances after they had left their homes without prior notice. The three of them, presumably at the same hour, headed to unknown whereabouts, never to be seen again. And despite this being a case with hardly any information on it and with so much room for conjecture and rumors, I, Ashley Waters, compromise to do everything that is in my power to unveil the secret behind their disappearances, one way or the other. Over and out. Okay. We've got a lot going on here. This is exciting. Night one, Monday, November 14th. Right. First night on the job. Oh, office is a mess, but it feels like a nice place to work. Oh, someone left a message. Nice. Uh, hello? Hello, hello. Hey, how's my favorite security guard doing, huh? <laughs> So, are you excited for your first day, Ashley? Not if you are. <laughs> Just kidding. You know, I feel quite enthusiastic about you working here, so, uh, I'll be recording some tapes for you, you know, to help you get through your first week. And, uh, well, some company wouldn't be so bad, right? I'll tell you, it gets a little stressful. But, hey, you'll do fine, I promise. So, uh, first of all, the security crew is provided with a CCTV monitor that allows you to watch every single room in the location through the cameras. Except okay. for those in restricted areas like the lobby or maintenance rooms. You can monitor the whole location without leaving your office. Yeah, cool, right? Lucky you, you know, you won't have to wander around in the middle of the dark with a flashlight. Speaking of which, each camera has a flashlight integrated. We just can't keep the place's lights on all night because that would be a huge waste of power. So, uh, use your flashlight to have a clear view, but always be responsible and do not fool around with it, please. It can run out of battery. Uh, by the way, you also have this button in your CCTV panel. By pressing it, you can toggle the vent cams. I'm sure you're probably thinking it's weird that the air ducts have cameras inside. Well, uh, let's just say we had a situation, and, uh, <clears throat> well, we had to install a couple of cameras in there. Okay. Uh, listen, there's this other guard who takes the day shift. His name is Michael. You probably encountered him before starting your shift. Michael? Well, he used to work during the night before, but he complained about, uh, conditions, and, uh, he's not really the first one. There was this other girl, too, but she chose to quit because one of the animatronics got into the office during her shift and tried to attack her. She left the building with a broken leg. We were really lucky she didn't sue us. Yeah, uh, but hey, I'm not trying to scare you or anything, but Michael said those machines have been a little twitchy lately. We moved Lovely. him to the day shift because he complained a lot about them moving at night and trying to get into the office and acting aggressively. That honestly gives me the chills. You know, I... I mean, they get proper maintenance every weekend. There's no reason for them to behave that way. So, I think the problem is that the animatronics are only programmed to work during the day and interact normally with the people and the children. And when the night falls and everyone has left, they think whoever is still inside the building must be an intruder. So they use their sensitivity to sound to try to locate you until they get into your office. Okay. I, I don't know, that's the best that comes to my mind. Uh, we had to come up with a quick solution, and we installed some speakers around the location and the ventilations. You know, just push the audio button in a different room if one of them is getting close to your office, okay? That will do for now. Oh, gotta go, sweetheart. Take care. By the way, I packed your pills in your bag, just in case you start feeling anxiety. But remember, no more than three pills, okay? Good, I'll pick you up when okay. your shift is over. Remember, 7 a.m. Alright, love you. Bye-bye. What? 
Did she just say about the animatronics? Alright, I've heard this one before. I guess it's a practical joke. Alright. Let's get serious. Sounds like my job isn't too hard, I hope. Yeah. One can hope that the job is not too difficult or dangerous. <laughs> Ooh, I can Is click. That a a mom? Oh, that's adorable. Ooh, we we get lore by clicking on things. Huh. Those look funny. What is this thing? Interesting. A fan. Okay. <laughs> that is a fan. I really want to touch the high voltage and stuff because we keep saying nope don't touch that <laughs> it's definitely interesting having having like human characters as animatronics It's certainly a unique take. Even though we have, you know, Foxy over here. <laughs> Excuse me? What? What was that noise? Hello? Well, that's concerning. Oh! Uh, okay. You're moving. You're, uh, creepy looking dude. Okay. Uh. Nope, don't touch that. <laughs> nope, don't touch that. So. so. Do they travel through the vents? Well, that guy doesn't. Uh... Wait, maybe they do? Crap. They're in the hall. What do I do? Or, they're almost here, I should say. Right? Because we're gonna be that room at the very bottom. Connected to the party room, right? Let's turn the light off. Oh, I hope that's their mechanic. I can confirm it is not their mechanic. What an odd surprise. That voice in the distance indicated something. Certainly familiar. Okay. Thank you, Hayden. Uh, use audio speakers to lure him back. But what do I do if he gets there? Am I just, like, screwed? Wow, there are seven knights. That's cool. All right. First night on the job. Oh, office is a mess, but... Okay. So that means we can skip ahead and then... Okay, so that's our spring trap. It's gonna be our audio lure guy. Got it, got it. We can do this. Or something. We might not be able to do this, but one can hope and try. Okay. 
So we're just going to chill out. Have a little conversation, I guess. Let's talk about FNAF. Uh, Help Wanted 2 is pretty cool. Uh, I, I feel bad for not being able to like do a video on it. Like I feel both bad for myself and for you guys because I had played Ruin. Uh, but um, I cannot, for, for starters, I do not currently own a VR headset. And second of all, I'm uh, not supposed to play VR at the moment because of um, some vision-related issues that need to be sorted out and vr might <laughs> aggravate <laughs> like it might make me really sick given my current situation but <clears throat> help wanted to did provide us a lot of really fun lore uh information and a lot of stuff to chew on and i am excited about a lot of that um i watched playthroughs so i am pretty excited about like the implications with Cassie potentially being a future villain and, uh, you know, the mimic and everything. Like, I'm, I'm excited about what comes next. Oh, this dude's moving. Moving. Okay. So we've got to use the audio lures. So I'm trying to figure out where is this guy going to move to? Maybe. Okay. Let's see. Okay. I'm gonna keep them in place. But yeah. Flippin' Up Wanted 2 gave us a lot of, like, really interesting information. And a lot to chew on. Uh... Especially with uh, the princess quest ending and like the gravestones and everything, and with the whole reveal that the whole thing is uh, in, it's real and it's not another VR simulation, or at least it's real with, you know, minor um, visual tweaking from the AR mask, which has some interesting implications for uh, the effectiveness of, you know, the fire in FNAF 6. Oh, I can click on these monitors. Hey, I could get a few bucks if I sold these. Maybe if I asked Marion's boyfriend to fix them. Interesting. Thinking about selling the stuff here. Yeah, but I I am super excited for number one when the flat mode releases for Help Wanted 2 this spring. And also for when I eventually can get back into VR. Uh, it, it's a bit of a bummer, um, but it is what it is. Like, if I do VR, like, I will get super sick. Um... <laughs> In, in this current state, but I am excited for when that is no longer the case, as it used to be, <laughs> or used to not be. I don't know quite the phrasing I'm looking for there, but you know what I mean. Heck, when that time comes, I'm gonna play flipping Minecraft and VR and all kinds of goodies. Um, it's 5 a.m. I don't know if these nights last till 6 a.m. or... No, it's 6 a.m. Okay. Okay, 6 a.m. has come and gone, and that dude is still wandering. <laughs> That's a little concerning.
All right. Ooh, wait, can we click on this? No. I thought we could. Okay. Okay. We made it. Yo. First night done. And that was surreal. Not positively surreal. Yeah. Oh. <gasps> Oh my gosh, it's the frog from Scott Cawthon's A Christmas Journey? <laughs> that's awesome. I love the... That's a thing. There are collectibles like that. Well, I made it here. Now let's see what we can find. Get information from people. Okay. Hello. Good morning. Um, sorry for interrupting. My name is Ashley, and I'm doing an investigation project for a school about the three missing children from 1990. I was wondering if any of you two live nearby, and if so, do you know anything about the case? Oh, the children. Yeah, I live in this side of town, and... Uh, one of my young neighbors used to be friends with Wendy Gribble, one of the missing kids. He once told me that the day she disappeared, her family took her to Lake Spunland earlier in the morning, and he recalls she looked excited for something the whole day, but that's all I know. I personally know nothing about the case, because I don't live here, but Billy told me that the children left their homes at night to never be seen again. I assume they went to go play somewhere without permission and got kidnapped. Such an unfortunate event. Whatever happened to them, I hope they're still alive and return home return home safe one day. It's always best to have hope and to be positive. I agree. Well, thanks so much. That will be useful. Anytime, young lady. This gives me FNAF 4 vibes. Not only with walking around and talking to people, but like the actual atmosphere of this, the sidewalks and walking around with flowers on the sides and interesting. Oh, hello. 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 You don't want to talk? Are, are you sure? Okay. I'll leave you be. Oh. Hello. I... Okay, why can I not talk to people? Good morning there. Excuse me, I'm doing an investigation project for school about the... About the missing... Ch about the missing children from 1990? Yeah, I know everything about it. Dot, dot, dot. How did I... How did you know I was going to say that? Well, how would I not know? I know everything. But I'm afraid I can't tell you anything. This guy is either an edgelord or incredibly suspicious. <laughs> Wait, why not? Because then it wouldn't make sense. What? If what wouldn't make sense? Nothing. Excuse me, Ashley, I must go now. Follow him! <laughs> Wait a minute, how does he know my name? Huh. I see. I see. <laughs> yeah, this is a strange town. Can we follow the dude? Nope. Probably not a good idea to follow them anyway. Can I not talk to you still? Did you see me? Like you might know something? Older gentleman? Hello. Enjoying the shadow? Absolutely. It's so fresh here. How may I help you, pretty lady? Oh. Yeah, well, I'm doing an investigation, and would like to ask you a couple of questions. 
Hmm, I see. Playing the detective. Not really. It's for my final semester. Anyway, how safe do you think your hometown is? Safe? Well, I don't have any complaints about safety in this town or anything. The most I could say is that drivers are a bit clumsy sometimes. I see. Tell me, why would a child leave his own house in the middle of the night? What do you think a child could be looking for? Huh, that's an interesting question. <laughs> why would a child... <laughs> They must. Oh, jeez. The only answer I can think of is. You know, perhaps the child just wants some extra time in the playground. You know how children, children are. Alright then. Oh, that's all I needed, thanks. Hello, sir, please. Do you have any information from it now? I'm like, I, you've lived here a while, hopefully. You're an older. Okay. <laughs> that dude does not want to help me. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, so we can't go up. Maybe we can go this way. Nope. I feel like this is the only spot with... Wait. What is this? Weird. Oh. Oh. Okay, hello. Hello, good morning, sir. I'm sorry to bother. I'm Ashley Botters, high school student. And I was wondering if you could provide some help for an investigation project. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's 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 Mr. Coffin. Hey Ashley, nice to meet you. It's Mr. Coughlin you're talking to Mr. Coffin you're talking to. How may I be of service to you? I'm always glad to help. Thank you, sir. I'm working on an investigation for school. It's about the three missing children case that happened four years ago. And I came here to interview people from the town and listen to what they know. Any comments you'd like to offer, sir? Oh, dear. Those poor little ones. Well, I'm a very open person, and I've taken the time to know almost every person in this small town. I had the chance to know the parents of one of the kids, Martin, I think. Short after it has disappeared. Short after. <sighs> I apologize for yawning. I am tired. Uh, I talked to his family to give them my prayers, and his father told me that the boy was at home that night when the mother called for him for dinner. Martin was just gone. That's insane. He was in what was supposed to be the safest place he could have been at, and his father suspects he may have gone back to Lake's Funland. They went there that morning, and his brother recalls seeing Martin speaking with someone behind a door, and he acted a bit anxious for the rest of the day. That's all I was told. Hope it's useful information. Yeah, that's really good information. All right, thank you so much, sir. Have a nice day. You're welcome, Ashley. It was a pleasure. Take care. Curious. Can I talk to the kiddos? Ah. Okay. Oh, there's a dude here. Will you talk to me? Good morning, sir. Have a minute? Oh, it's Darren. Okay. For sure. For sure, lady. Tell me. My name is Ashley Waters. I study at Royal Vale, and I'm currently working on an investigation about the three missing children case from 1990. Uh, for my last semester. Really? Hey, that's great. I've been working on a bit of the case. I've been working a bit on the case as well. For a while, at least. You see, I used to be a detective at the police department uh, in town long ago, so you can imagine how much I'm into cases like that. Perhaps I could partner with you and collaborate. What do you think? Oh, really? You'd be down to help? Absolutely. Here, let me write my number down on your notebook so we can keep in contact. 
great. Well, uh, thank you, sir. No problem, Ashley. We're going to need help with this one. We're talking about a case with little to no information, so perhaps we can find more clues together and tie up loose ends. Definitely. Well, I'll see you then. Take care. By the way, it's Hill. Darren Hill. To serve you. Okay. Alright. Second night, and now I am not so excited anymore. Right. Let's hope our shiny friend doesn't leave stage tonight. <laughs> I wonder if Mom left a message. Oh, of course she did. We've got a message. Alright, let's check on these folks. Hello there, honey. Well done. See? I told you your first night wouldn't be a problem. You did good. Hey, I have an update for you. We did a checking routine to the animatronics earlier this morning. You know, mere protocol thing. We don't really have anything special scheduled for this week. We did a couple of tests and monitored each animatronic's view, and we found something interesting that could be useful for you. Alex and John Kun, the coyote and the rabbit on stage 02, appear to have a particular flaw in common. It looks like their vision glitches in the dark. The image goes all pixelated, so I think you can use that against them. I doubt you can fool them with the speakers, so my suggestion is, if they ever leave their stage and approach your office, just try shutting down the office's power with the switch on your desk. It's likely they won't see you, or their system's rebooting is another possibility. By the way, now that we're focusing on Stage 02, uh, last night I managed to set up the music tape in there to work properly, but I doubt I'll be able to do the same now. Listen, just check that camera every now and then and make sure it's playing, alright? If it ends, or if it glitches, whatever, just rewind and then play it again, got it? I spoke to Michael, and, uh, he said one of them would move if the tape remained stopped. I think that must be Alice. So, yeah, be careful and pay attention to that. All right, I've got to go and do some paperwork now, but take care. Love you. Oh, God, now you're telling me I have to deal with more of them? <laughs> At least I have a grandma to get a big lucky check. Interesting. So we need to keep the tape going, I guess? Okay, so we're going to keep you in place. Let's just take a look around. Okay. We're jamming. Oh, there are limits on the lures. Interesting. Alright, we rewound the tape. We're jamming. Oh crap. Foxy's on the move.
Okay. Okay. Excuse me? Where'd the dude go? Rewind. Be kind. Rewind. Okay. Okay. Lights off. We're good, right? We're good now? Dude left? Okay. We're good. This is good. One can assume. Dude's on the move again. Not as good. Uh. Oh, and now the rabbit's on the move. Where the crap? Okay. No. Unacceptable. Where are you? Oh, hi. Yeah, uh... Sorry about your, uh, tape. Oh, crap. Lights off! What is happening? Whoa. Okay, hello. Okay. It's okay. Okay. We're good. Hello. We're good. Okay, we're not good. <laughs> That's literally all the show you could get. Gosh darn it. Okay. That was kind of funny. I... Ah, uh, man. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna call it here. Uh, I might come back to this and do another part. I might. I don't know. I might end up playing it off camera, but this is really cool. I love seeing a fan game uh, that takes its own original take, its own storyline, really like does its own thing. The mechanics are really fun. Um, it's cool. It's really, really cool. Uh, I'd love to see more fan games like this. Anyways. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Farewell, and have a nice day.